Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The Honorable our lecturer, Miss Arini Nurul Hidayati MPD, and all my beloved presenters and participants. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let us thank to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala because of His blessing, we are able to come here joining this webinar. Salawat and salam may always be given to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who has guided us from the darkness into the brightness. I'd like to thank everyone who's joining us from the university and also across the major of Siliwang University. Welcome to ADSES webinar on academic presentation 2022 with the theme, Be a Tremendous Learner by Mastering Language Skills. My name is Dila Prila Jayuna. I come from Tasikmalaya. I'm a sixth semester student of English Education Department of Siliwang University, and I'll be your moderator for today's session. I'm so grateful to be your moderator in this webinar held by English Department Student Association, English Education Department, Siliwang University. I hope this webinar will be running well. I mean. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the agendas for this webinar are the first opening, second presentation, third question and answer session, and the last is closing. We have done the opening and now I'd like to introduce our presenters. For the presenters of today's session are students of fourth semester of English Education Department, Siliwang University. We have eight speakers here. They are Dini Novianti, Raihani Fitri Salsabila, Salsa Amalia Nurpadila, Siti Alifah Tunisa, Osinur Viani, Muhammad Rizki Maulana, Fauzia Azahra, and Ajeng Dwi Kusmayanti. And now I'd like to read the regulation for access webinar on academic presentation 2022. First, this webinar will last for one and a half hour. Second, the only language used to communicate is English. Third, all participants are suggested to take notes during the presentation. Fourth, all participants must turn off the audio during the presentation. Fifth, the presentation will be held in five to seven minutes for each presenter. Sixth, the moderator will set a time to remind the presenter. Seventh, the Q&A session will come after the whole presentation. The questions can be typed in the chat box since the early presentation or anyone interested in talking directly to the presenters is pleased to raise your hand. We will facilitate you if we will still have time. Eight, if you could not get your answer, the presenters will send the answer via email. All right, now this is what we are waiting for. We are going to the presentation session. For the first presenter, I'd like to invite Dini Novianti to present her topic, Be Usual to Listen English Expressions by Watching English TV Series. All right, Dini, time is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to moderator for giving me a chance. Also, thank you to all participants for joining this webinar with us. Let me introduce myself. My name is Dino Fianti, and in this very special opportunity, I would like to talk about listening, specifically about how watching English TV series could be an option for you to improve your listening skill and be a better learner. 
There are three main points of my presentation today, which are listening is the base for learning language, why you should learn English through English TV series, and then the conclusion. Without any further ado, let's begin with the first main point. Listening is the base for learning language. According to Fayton in 2013, 45% of our communication time is used for listening, while speaking is 30%, reading is 16%, and writing is only 9%. Of course, our activity is actually dominated by listening. We listen to lecturer or teachers, we listen to podcasts, music, we listen to our friends' stories, and even now we are listening to presenters in this webinar, right? And the fact is, listening is the first one to appear among other language skills, as stated by Yildirim and Yildirim in 2016. I mean, how do you think we know language in the first place? The answer is because we listen since we were born. A baby could know language, know how to speak because babies are listening to their parents and people around them when they communicate over and over again until they understand and finally speak with the language that they heard. But as a note, you need to remember that listening is different than hearing, although both are important in communication. Klein in 1996 he stated that hearing is the perception of sound while listening is the attachment of the meaning to the sound. Listening is active while hearing is passive. When you listen, you need to understand. Uh, while when you hear something, it doesn't mean that you have to understand what you hear. Steve Kaufman also believed that listening is the base for learning language. He quoted that on one of his videos, get your listening comprehensions and the others will follow. Now, one method that you could use to improve your listening skill is through English TV series. But you might wondering why you should learn English through English TV series. Well, Wang in 2012 mentioned several reasons about it. First, the significant influence of the dialogue. You know, in a series, for one season, there are many episodes, right? And it is possibly many repeated words or phrases which are said by the actors and become familiar in our ears. The second one is aspects of language which are less frequently taught, such as intonation, gesture, facial expression, and pronunciation. You won't find this kind of aspects unless you study in the specific field, such as English education department. Then the third one is you can learn culture without going abroad. Of course, uh, every kind of movie contains culture in it, but in ETS or English TV series, you can learn about the culture more deeply. Uh, also, if you want to learn English independently, this could be the best genre for you. Here are the examples of some famous English TV series. All right, you can consider it as my recommendations of some fun English TV series that you can watch during holiday or in your spare time. They are The Vampire Diaries, Chilling Adventure of Sabrina, and Fate Wing Saga. These are my favorites, FYI. Uh, but I cannot mention the details because the limited time, but if you are curious about it, uh, you can ask me on the Q&A session later on. Finally, the conclusion. It is important to know about listening. Children listen first before, before they speak, read, and finally writing. And an alternative to improve your listening skill is by watching English TV series because it contains many episodes which could lead us to listen some expression many times over and over again until we use all with it. Just like the definition of practice makes perfect which refers to you can be better at something when you do it often. So listen more and be better. Here are the differences. All right, I guess that's all I can say. Uh, thank you for your attention. I give it back to moderator. All right, 
Thank you very much, Dini, for your interesting presentation. I hope that everyone can get the message from your presentation. Thank you very much. And for the audience, uh, if you have any question related to her topic, you can simply type your question on the chat box and will be answered in the Q&A session. All right, let's move to the second presenter. I'd like to invite Raihani Fitri Salsabila to present her topic, Flashcard Media for Children, a Vocabulary Booster. Raihani, time is yours. All right, thank you, moderator, for the opportunity. Honorable to all the lecturers in this meeting room and distinguished ladies and gentlemen, hope you are in a good condition and thanks for being here with me. I'm Rehani Fitri Salsabila. And on this occasion, I'd like to bring a topic about flashcard media for children, a vocabulary booster. I divide my presentation into three main sections. First, the young children's difficulty in learning vocabulary. Second, how is vocabulary learned? And the last is the use of flashcard media for teaching vocabulary technique. Let's open this presentation with quotes from the English writer Evelyn Wolf. One forgets words as one forgets names. Once the vocabulary needs constant fertilizing or it will die. What does it mean? It means that we have to keep learning vocabulary because it is important and without it, we will know nothing. All right, now we will move to discuss the first main section that, in fact, the young children face difficulty in learning vocabulary. Is that right? According to Richard in 2013, learning vocabulary is a challenge for learners, including young children, whereas the role of vocabulary in English is basic to all four skills, such as listening, speaking, reading, and writing. But before that, I would like to ask, in your opinion, who are young children? Does anyone know? All right, there is also in the screen, young children are children roughly from the age of 3 up to 11 or 12 years old. They have some characteristic, one of which is they usually get bored quickly. Then what is the challenge? According to the Mercury in 2010 and Mercury in 2007, the challenge in learning vocabulary for young children can come because they hard to memorize new vocabulary items because as we know that there are the number of words in English such as the size of the task, the size of vocabulary, and etc. Those difficulties cannot be separated from how they learn vocabulary. How exactly is vocabulary learned? Is there only one way to learn vocabulary? Let's move to the second main section. According to Nation in 2021, vocabulary can be learned with four equal integrated strands. First, reading and listening that can be actualized in, ex in extensive reading and extensive listening activities. Second, writing and speaking. Third, fluency development. And the last is deliberate learning, one of which is the use of flashcard media for teaching vocabulary technique that I will explain more about. But how and why do teachers need to use flashcard media in helping young children to learn vocabulary? There is the definition from Oxford Dictionary in 1995. Flashcard is a card with a word and words and sometimes a picture on it. So in the flashcard, there are uh, pictures or there is picture and the, num uh, the word or the name of its picture. It is related to the characteristic of young learners who feel interested with something attractive shapes and colors. It also allows learners to connect the meaning, uh, the words to sample pictures are effective for any level and can be taken almost everywhere. So the young children can learn using flashcard media, not just in the classroom, but in everywhere. Then how to apply that? The method is simple. According to Aulia in 2018, first, teachers prepare the flashcard related to the topic. For example, the topic is about animals or public places and etc. Then teachers divide students into some small groups if the size of the classroom is big. Next, teachers display the picture of the topic, for example, on the whiteboard and ask every representative of each group to find the displayed picture's name. If they found it, they have to match the name with the displayed pictures. 
After that, teachers drill every single vocabulary which was used and ask students to draw, for example, draw their favorite animals, draw their favorite public places, and etc., and write down the name under its picture. I also have applied this method at private lessons to my young children students. As you can see on the screen, there are three pictures on the slide and the results you enjoyed and can remember the vocabularies fast. To end this conclusion, to end this presentation, I mean, I have concluded the challenge of learning vocabulary for young children can be solved by the use of flashcard media as teaching vocabulary technique that can make the atmosphere of teaching and learning vocabulary more exciting and not considered difficult. In the future, I hope teachers also have to find some creative ways to solve the difficulty in learning vocabulary. As the closing, there is quotes from Tim Gunn, few activities are as delightful as learning vocabulary, so there will always be teaching technique to overcome the difficulties in learning vocabulary. Here are the references that I used. Thank you for your attention. I'm Raihani and I'll give it back to the moderator. All right, Raihani, thank you very much for your informative presentation. And if you uh, guys have a question related to her topic, you can simply type your question on the chat box and will be answered in the Q&A session. All right, let's move to the next presenter. I'd like to invite Salsa Amalia Nurpadila to present her topic, the utilization of short stories as extensive reading sources on vocabulary learning. All right, Salsa. Time is yours. All right, thanks, moderator, for hosting me, and thank you to all the audiences for attending this session. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. My name is Salsa Amalia Nurpadila, and I'm from Siliwang University. First of all, let me thank the entire audience who have been pleased to attend this session, and also I hope you are in a good condition. I mean, all right, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see on the screen today, I would like to present about how you can utilize short stories as extensive reading sources on your vocabulary learning. That maybe there will be some of the questions in your mind like, how often should I look at first? What should I focus on? Because this is a story and I don't know what should I focus on, right? Should I focus on the plot or should I focus on the vocabulary? Yeah, these are some of the questions that are very likely to come to your mind when you learn vocabulary through stories. But to make it clear, let's go to the first material. All right, according to Professor Coalition, extensive reading means reading lots of books which are at the right level for you. Furthermore, Labiba says that extensive reading is also related to reading interest. It means that you can choose the type of book you like that suits your level. So it can be said that according to its definition, extensive reading exposes learners to large quantities of material within the linguistic competence, which is at the same time pleasurable. And then one type of book that can be part of your extensive reading activities is short stories, because uh, these short stories can help you to learn vocabulary and to understand not only the meaning of the words you learned, but also their use in the context. But the question here is how you can learn vocabulary through short stories, right? Okay, the first thing that you have to know is the focus of your reading. So, what should you focus on when you are reading your vocabulary or something else? The basic answer is no. You're not going to focus on learning vocabulary, but you're going to focus on the plot. Why? Because the ultimate goal with extensive reading is to read for enjoyment. So, focusing on anything else when you are reading is missing the point. Because to understand the plot, you have to get through the word first, and understanding the word is a vehicle to understand the plot. If you focus on the plot of the story you are reading, you will develop um, the ability to learn to read independently. But if you focus on the vocabulary always, then every new word, every word you don't know, you understand, you don't understand, becomes like an objective for you. Every time you see a new word, you will think like, oh my God, I have to learn it, I have to learn it, of course, and it can lead you to stop reading because you just end up obsessing about uh, every new word you met, which means that you don't get up with the story. So the question again, at which step do you look up first? Okay, here, 
Professor Valnesian studied the first step that you need to do, which is repetition. It means that you need to come across the route several times. Therefore, Richards recommended the five step process here, which is the first one is read the short story to the end. In this step, you're just going to start reading purely for enjoyment, just because you like reading and because this is a story that's uh, interesting to you. And if you have difficulty understanding the plot because there are new words that you don't understand, or you could say uh, you notice a new word, Think Time advises you to color words you don't understand with color highlighters. And then the next step is to go back and read again the short story. And if you find another new word that you don't understand, you can color the word again but with a different color highlighter. And then you can also look at the summary of the story. If your uh, short story has a summary uh, that will help you to understand the plot. And then also you can look up some keywords. If the short story you are reading has a list of keywords. And the last step is read again until the gist, until the main elements of the plot are clear. That's the five step process. And then what exactly should you do with the words you color when you are reading? Here, Professor Valnesian also studied some stuff to process the words you color when you read the short stories. The first one is noticing in your word. As I said before, in the first step of Richard's recommendation, when you notice a new word, when you find the word that you don't understand, you color that word and then you guess that word. You guess the meaning of that word from the context. But the point here, the point here is you cannot stop reading when you cannot guess the read from the context. Okay, you have to continue reading and you can guess it again in the next try. And then the next step is retrieval. This step is done in your second reading. You will try to remember about the word in the previous meetings or in the first reading. I mean, uh, in the first step of Richard's recommendation, it will help you to strengthen the meaning of that word in your memory. And then the next step is the varied meetings. Here, Kumbhrupa said that short stories are able to give readers, to give you the opportunity to repeat words in different terms unconsciously. So when you find the same word while reading, you cannot interpret that word with the word you met before because the meaning could be different from the one you read before, okay, depending on the context. And then if you have understood the plot, if you have understood uh, the story, you can do elaboration with the new words that you find in your short story. Elaboration here means that you analyze the word. And then for example, here, Erkaya in 2005 recommended uh, words from the vision and also search for synonyms that will help you to enrich your vocabulary as in elaboration learning activities. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it seems like that we are at the end of my presentation. So I will conclude this presentation. If you want to learn or improve your vocabulary, you can use short stories because short stories will help you to learn and understand not only the meaning of new words, but also their use in the context. And the important point you should apply is to focus on the plot rather than learning vocabulary. And then the main thing you have to do is read your short story over and over again until you understand the plot. And if you find a vocabulary that you don't understand that new for you, you can start to give color to the word and guess its meaning from its context. And then you can do a retrieval that will help you to remember varied meetings and also elaboration. Last two but not least, Foundation said that the more repetition, the better it is for learning. Therefore, you have to do lots of extensive reading is a way of getting a lot of repetition. That's all from me. Thank you so much for your attention. And these are these are my references. I give it back to the moderator. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Salsa. The more repetition, the better it is for learning. Such an interesting material. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Salsa. And uh, uh, I also want to thank to the audience who have asked through the chat box. Your question will be answered in the Q and A session. And you, and if you guys have a question related to Salsa's topic, you can also type your question on the chat box, and will be answered in the Q and A session. All right, let's move to the next presenter. I'd like to invite Siti Alifah Tunisa to present her topic, 
incidental vocabulary learning through songs. All right, Alifa, time is yours. All right, thank you, moderator, for the opportunity, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for attending this session. Let me introduce myself. My name is Siti Alifa Tunisa. I'm a colleague student Silwangi University. Today, I'd like to bring a topic about incidental vocabulary learning through songs. I'll divide my presentation into three sections. The first one is what is incidental vocabulary learning. The second one is tips when we learn incidental vocabulary learning. And the last one is the reason why you should choose song as your vocabulary learning. Uh, listening to music is one of the most relaxing and enjoyable activities for many people. In metal disease of 400 studies, Levitin and his postgraduate research fellow, Mona Lisa Chanda, PhD, found that music uh, improved the body immune system function and reduced stress. Besides that, listening to music can also be used as an object of learning second language. Medina 1993 said that the use of song as a vehicle for language learning has become common practice. Did you know by listening to music as well you are doing incidental vocabulary learning? And then what is incidental vocabulary learning? According to Richard and Smith, 2002, incidental learning is the process of learning something without the intention of doing so. Great potential for incidental learning through songs because of the high coverage of the high of frequency word families, the repeated encounter with both function and content words, as well as the repetitive nature of song themselves, and the rich informative context in song lyrics. In language acquisition, learning from context is, is one of the most uh, effective things in learning vocabulary. This is way to give getting input either by listening, reading, or both. Uh, incidental learning might include explicit memory and consist thinking. The deeper, you, the deeper you go with your processing, the more your explicit memory is involved. And next to the... Uh, next, uh, let's move to the next subject. The second subject is tips when we learn incidental vocabulary learning. The formula is simple. Engage in literally any activity in your target language and let your brain source things automatically. Substantial vocabulary gains are guaranteed. According to present 2021, there are three tips for incidental vocabulary learning. The first one is spend a lot of your target language. Spend a lot of your time in your target language so that you can progress. Do anything in your target language, consistently doing stuff in your target language as well as the having that belief you can achieve. We learn when we truly enjoy it. So find anything that attracts your attention, like uh, you can choose song that you like and keep your target language. Uh, the second one is consistency. Find a perfect amount of time to spend your language that is not too small, but also not too challenging, and then go with that. It's all about sustainability for you to continue daily and create consistency. Don't force yourself to swear more, but more, but more active immersion in mind. It might seem that you are learning more, but if you do it too much, you will become exhausted. I say this with a more active immersion in mind, but also passive immersion, uh, since it still requires uh, some attention. Passive immersion should be done whenever you can, meaning during commute times out, uh, outside, basically any time where you either cannot uh, do active immersion. Passive listening is for you to get a sense of the sounds and register your target language as baby as a baby's hearing their parents. And the last is reminder. It's it's okay if you don't understand and cannot follow what is being said. Take simple advice to start small things and start imputing. Start small tiny tasks and maybe you can adjust. And the last, and the last subject is why you should choose song as your vocabulary learning. Uh, the first one is song can provide large quantity of language input and highly motivating. The second is use of song uh, for, like, uh, for language learning has also proven assist learner so that your brain automatically sort out the most uh, frequent words. Uh, the third is Medina 1993 is the only study to empirical investigate second language incidental learning from listening to song. The study provided evidence that song might potentially contribute to second language vocabulary growth. The fourth is corpus drive and study analyzing pop songs suggest that these songs are repetitive conversions alike and the mean speed of speech of what per minute was half the speed of spoken discourse. This characteristic uh, along with the song stuck in my head phenomenon which 
is uncontrollably rehearsing the song in one head. And the last is a lot of the same words are encountered in different songs. Studies have demonstrated that repeated encounter with the targeted vocabulary item can foster vocabulary acquisition. And the conclusion is, listening to song can indirectly increase your vocabulary even you are relaxing listening to them. Songs can provide large quantity of language input. Repeated listening to song has a positive effect on learning aspect of vocabulary knowledge. By using music as a vocabulary learning object, you can still have fun while learning vocabulary. And last, I have a quote from her book, What Make You Think, Music Make You you feel and a song make you feel a thought and those are the references that's all for me back to moderator all right thank you very much alifa for your great presentation and uh, if you guys have a question related to her topic you can type your question in the chat box and will be answered in a q a session and let's move to the next presenter i'd like to invite osi Nurviani to present her topic, Learning Vocabulary Through Movies for Senior High School. All right, Osi, time is yours. All right, uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks, Murator, for hosting the meeting today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending this webinar session. I hope all of you have the good condition. My name is Osti Nurpiani. My topic today is about learning vocabulary through movie for senior high school. I divided my presentation into three sections. Number one is about advantages learning vocabulary through movie. Number two is about tips to learning English vocabulary. And the last one is about movies recommendation to learning English vocabulary. There are many ways to improve English, one of them by watching movies. Do you want to learn English with movies, but you don't know how? You don't know which movies will help, as you cannot understand a lot what is being said. With watching movies, besides having fun with interesting show, your English skills will be honed even more, especially the ability to remember vocabulary. Having a good vocabulary is one of the most important thing for a language speaker to be able to communicate. According to Gus Henra, 2017, implementing English movies for senior high school can also improve students' vocabulary. According to B.R. Simamora and Octaviani, 2020, students could enhance their vocabulary by watching English movie. And now, I will explain about advantages learning vocabulary to English movie. They are English movies, short natural language because they are from native speakers. So students can speak the correct pronunciation. And English movies provide a lot of content that can help the students learn how to use some expression, speaking and listening skill. And last one, students can also learn about the English culture. It's so important to have a vocabulary that cover a range of topics so that you can understand important announcement, safety information, conversation between friends, and last one, post on social media. According to Steph Kaufman in 2018, key issue with vocabulary learning are always the proper context usage and retention in long-term memory. And here, I will give the tips uh, to learn English vocabulary with movies, uh, the first one is about choose an interesting movie and match your current English level. This probably sound obvious, but if you choose a boring movie, you will be bored. If you bored, it will be difficult to pay attention, right? It's the perfect way to learn English through movie you love and you know. Select a movie that match your current English level. For example, for the beginners in English, I use uh, you can learn English through animation. The main reason is because the English is nice and easy to understand. And number two is about watch and watch with and without subtitle. I know it can be really challenging when you watch a movie for the first time, just turn on subtitle. But if you get the chance uh, to watch it a second time, try turning off subtitle. This way, you already know the story from the first time you watch, and this time you can try to understand the movie without subtitle. And 
Next, repeating a part of the movie. Sometimes you might hear something cool in the movie. For example, some short phrases or some language. If you like how it sounds, it's really help to repeat it. After it's out a lot while, you will be able to remember it for a longer time. It's so enjoyable exercise. And the last one, make notes that contain new vocabulary from the movie. So when you hear a word you are interested in a movie, make notes and find out what they mean to learn. This method is quite effective for increasing vocabulary in English as well as improving your English skills. And the last one, I will give the, some movies recommendation to learning English vocabulary. They are Toy Story. Animated movie like Toy Story as a good way to improve your English. They are usually aimed at children, which means the vocabulary is simple. However, Toy Story has been written so that is fun for adult too. And next, The Greatest Showman. This movie is very good and contains the message, tell about the visionary and they are song with the, the storyline that is easy to understand. And next, this Spider-Man. This movie is very fun and contains spectacular skins and it brings nostalgia to the previous Spider-Man films. And the last one, Harry Potter. Who doesn't know Harry Potter? This movie is suitable for learning British accent. Through this movie, the story is very exciting and you will be definitely find a lot of new vocabulary. And in the conclusion, movie is one of audiovisual media that can be used to improve students' English skills. There are some advantages of using English movies, such as movies can keep student interest in English learn learning, movies can improve student speaking skill, pronunciation, and can improve vocabulary. According to Leandro et al. 2018, movies are generally made for entertainment and aim to impress the audience for learning English. And there is a quote from Audrey Hepburn, everything I learned, I learned from the movie. And here are some references that I use. Thank you for attention. Back to moderator. All right. Thank you very much, Osi. Everything I learned, I learned from the movie. Such an interesting material. And uh, thank you to the audience who have asked through the chat box, your question will be answered in Q&A session. Uh, but if your question is not answered in the Q&A session due to the limited time, don't worry, the presenter will answer it via email. All right, let's move to the next presenter. I'd like to invite Muhammad Rizki Maulana to present his topic, Escalating Speaking Skills of High School Students Through Debate Technique. All right, Rizky, time is yours. Okay, thank you for your uh, recognition. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Hello, everyone. How is it today? I hope you're always in good condition and hopefully you're always in God's blessing. First of all, I'd like to thank the moderator for giving me a chance to speak in this moment. And then thank you very much for all of the audiences who have attended in this EBSAS webinar on academic presentation event 2022. Then let me introduce myself. I'm Muhammad Rizki Maulana. I am student of English Education Department, Siliwang University. I love English, but sometimes I feel and face difficulties when I try to speak with it. Yeah, this is the common uh, feelings that usually faced by Indonesian students as non-native speakers. Therefore, there are some efforts that we have to do to overcome this situation. But what kind of effort that we have to do? In this special occasion, I bring the topic that's quite interesting and informative to answer that question. Is splitting speaking skills of senior high school students to debate technique. I have divided the material into four parts. The first one is definition, and the second one is how to do. The third one is benefits, and the last one is you conclusion. Yes? Uh, I apologize to interrupt you because your screen is still in the title section. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, there is a technical problem. Let me share again. How about now? Yeah, it's already moved. Thank you. 
Okay. Yeah. Without any further ado, let's move to the main topic. Yeah. In this part, I'll inform I'll inform you about the definition. It's important for us to know about the concept before you go further to the next material that's quite larger. So, what is speaking? I think you have already known about this term because it's so familiar. Speaking is the ability of making use of language in ordinary voice, uttering words, knowing, and being able to use language, according to Hornby 1987. And then Kai 2006 added that in this globalization era, speaking is the most valuable skills because speaking as a verbal communication is a common way to communicate with each other. And then what is debate? Yeah, according to Bambang 2006, defined debate as an action in which two opponent groups compete by delivering different arguments and perspective. Each group is a form of three to five members. Debate is a very useful for students, especially in assisting them to figure out their anxiety, to share their ideas, or even to improve student communication skills. Debate is an excellent activity in learning language because it engage student in a variety of cognitive and linguistic ways. Then what is senior high school? Yeah, senior high school is a secondary education level that prior, uh, prioritize preparing students to continue the higher education with specificity, according to Ministry of National Education 2004. And then how to do debate technique in the classroom? Yeah, debate is considered as a form of speaking concept to enrich student knowledge and experience. According to Pradana 2017, debate may be done in the classroom in a form as follows. The first one, the students are divided into two groups. Maybe it can a B group or first second group and etc. And then the teacher should decide which is pro and contra to the topics or motions those are given. And then each group discuss their own part. Students have to dig the information about the topic deeper before they start to share their ideas or even to break uh, the opponent's argument. And then the teacher asks each group in turns to deliver their ideas one by one. The teacher may write all ideas on the board and at the end when they have finished debating, the teacher and the students make a conclusion together. Yeah, this is indeed one of the various form of debate, but though it seems quite simple, it doesn't reduce and the benefits that can be obtained by students. Talking about the benefits. So what is the benefit that we can get after using this technique in the FL classroom? Yeah, according to Bell in 2000, there are several benefits that we can gain by using the technique in teaching students speaking skills. The first one, improve students' communication skills. Because debate is about communication, how to communicate with each other, how to communicate with your opponents. And debaters spend many hours assembling and practicing hundreds of public speeches on any kind of topics that will be delivered and discussed. More you rehearse to debate with your opponents, more you get improvement on your communication skill. And then improve children's critical thinking. Yeah, because in debating, students have to always analyze the topic critically. Thinking critically will help students to understand about the topic well, to find and cover uh, to find a hidden thing and uncover the facts and that contents of the topic. And last one, build ethical character. Yeah, this is the important one because in debating, students have always respect their opponents. The mutual respect is a form in differences. So those are some benefits that you can gain after using this technique in learning language. Then move to the last part, conclusion. Yeah. Speaking is one of the most important skills that children have to master as language learners. One of the solutions to improve children's speaking skills is by using debate technique. It deals with a form of discussion, but in extent, it is a form of arguing ideas between pros and contrast, which signifies that debate not only improves children's inability to speak in general, but also how students see things critically and deeply. In this case, teachers have to look for another ways to improve children's speaking skills. Considering this ability is very important in supporting success of language learning. There is a question made uh, came from Maya Angelo. I've learned that people will forget what you say, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. I think enough for me. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and hopefully you'll never forget about this moment. Those are some references I use 
thank you for your nice attention. I'm Muhammad Zima Lamli. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Give it back to the moderator. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Rizky. Such an enjoyable presentation. And uh, if you guys have a question related to Rizky's topic, you can type your question on the chat box and we'll be answering Q&A session. All right, let's move to the next presenter. I'd like to invite Fauzia Azahra to present her topic, The Power of Extensive Reading in Motivating Students Reading Activity. All right, Fauzia, time is yours. All right, thank you, Mojorja. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you today? I hope you are always in a good condition. Before that, I would like to thank the moderator for hosting the meeting and thank you to participants for attending this session. Let me introduce myself. myself I'm Fuzadara. What I'd like to present to you today is the power of extensive reading in motivating students' reading activity. Next, uh, and in my presentation, I'll focus on four major sections. First, what is extensive reading? Second, what is evidence that extensive reading can motivate students' reading activity? And third, how to make extensive reading happen in motivating students' reading activity? And last, conclusion. Next, uh, before I really start my presentation, I want to ask you, do you think reading is boring? If you say yes, reading is boring, that's false. You haven't find the right book yet. So why there are people who still don't like reading? Even though, as Dr. Day said, that reading is magic and fun because when we get involved to the text, we forget anything. For example, when we read short story or novel, we forget anything because in doing in reading novel, we get involved to the text. We feel like as main character of the story, we feel going to another universe because when we read, we use our imagination. Then one way to get used to reading that is done by the teacher to the students is through extensive reading. And next, uh, I'm going to the first topic. What is extensive reading? There are some experts stated the definition of extensive reading. Grave and Store 2002 stated that extensive reading is a method to teach reading, which allows the learners to read as much as possible. And the text must be suitable for the level. Furthermore, Bamford and they 2004 state that extensive reading is an approach to language teaching in which learners read a lot of easy material in the new language. Also, Dr. Day stated that extensive reading is an approach to the teaching of language, which involves the students from reading a lot of books that are easy and interesting what they, they choose. From a bunch of research studies that extensive reading also helps the other areas of language development reading, writing, listening, and speaking, and also the effect of dimension on attitude and motivation. So extensive reading is quite exciting in that it gets more than just reading. And next, the type of the text that can be used by students is the type of reading according to their level and interest. For example, the most popular is a read and interesting are fiction such as short stories, novels, comics. However, much like 2003 added that the magazines, newspaper, or even biography can also be used as options for extensive reading activities. Next point, what is evidence that extensive reading can motivate students' reading activity? According to Sudeman 2017, extensive reading motivates learners to read a lot of text on a wide range of topics because the students select the reading material based upon its relevance to their interests, knowledge, and experience. Students read text that match their language level, and they choose the type and place to read. Extensive reading allows students to enjoy in reading as they gain a general understanding of literary ideas, learn reading strategies, acquire new vocabulary and increase their English proficiency. In addition, extensive reading helps the students to build perspective that reading is a fascinating activity. This lesson is supported by evidence according to Verdela's research 2014. If students were motivated to read English in general were because the texts were interesting, learning methods and activities were enjoyable, there was reading homework and reading journal, and there was an opportunity to know English more. And next, this brings me to the end of my point, how to make extensive reading happen. Dr. Day mentioned ways to make 
interactive reading happens for students reading activity. First, allows the students to choose the text that interested them as suitable for their level. For example, they like novels or comics or short stories. For the genre of books, it can be science fiction or historical fiction, whatever they want. Make sure it's suitable for their level. If they are teenagers, they don't read that romance novel, right? And second, give silent reading time to the students. For example, give them 15 until 20 minutes, enough to get used to reading books before class starts. And third, get involved with the students to give plenty of choice and opportunities to comment on material. They can express their opinion or comment about the books they read. And fourth, ask the students to make book reports. And present in classroom, it will comprehend what they read. And present in class to promote the, the books they read so that uh, other friends are interested interested in reading what their friends are reading. And fifth, use instrumental motivation. For example, give rewards after they have finished reading a book. We can give them a new reading book, give them a snack, or any form of gift. And last, the most important thing is that the teacher is their role model, model to motivate them to read. The teacher must be seen by the student who like to read books anywhere so that the students become motivated because their teacher also likes to read books or the teacher can share stories with students. I think it will be fun. And next, let me briefly summarize what I've said so far. Extensive reading is an approach to teaching of reading that can motivate students to read because it allows the students to read a lot of books that are easy and interesting. I hope that many students will will be motivated to love reading so that they, that they are highly literate through extensive reading which is implemented by the teachers and educators. And next, I found a quote from Dr. Sis, an American author. The more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go because it helps you to learn about cool new things such as how the world works or about new exotic place around the world having this knowledge can open up many doors in the future. I think it's enough for me. Thank you all for listening. I'll return back to the moderator. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Fauzia. Uh, such an informative presentation. Uh, and if you guys have a question related to her topic, you can type your question in the chat box and will be answered in a Q&A session. All right, let's move to the next presenter. I'd like to invite Ajeng Rikus Mayanti to present her topic, Developing Creative Writing from the Impact of the Internet as a Source of Information. All right, Ajeng, time is yours. All right, thank you for the moderator for helping to organize this presentation of this webinar session for our group. And to ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attending for this webinar session. My name is Ajeng Rikus Mayanti, and my topic today is developing creative writing from the impact of the internet as a source of information. Next slide. Okay, I divide my presentation today into three sections. The first one is what is creative writing? Second one is how does technology affect writing skill, especially creative writing? And the last one is how do you develop creative writing with technology as a source of information? Next, uh, the first one is what is creative writing? One of writing skill is creative writing, which is a form of writing with many types of genres that I'm to educate and entertain readers so that the diction used is later, a plot that raises imagination and still inform the reader about something. The first chapters explore principles and procedures of creative writing that apply generally to the writing and techniques of fiction, creative nonfiction, poetry, and some extant drama. According to uh, Morley 2007, not all creative writers write for the page. We look at creative writing as a verbal art in performance, as a hybrid with public and visual art, and as electronic literature. This is skill must be developed, and there are always innovation that are in accordance with the times. According to Mukhalafi 2021, such as the current study and to construct a strategy based on information technology for teaching English, English course 102. 
and assess its impact on developing creative writing skills. Next, then how does uh, the, te the technology affect writing skill, especially creative writing? Writing skill which help long use the technology in making a work of writing. Of course, technology is very influential on the development of writing works. In creative writing itself, especially in the era of all run innovation technology in writing, of course, it will also develop. Creative writing is not a type of scientific writing that is flat in the flow. So th with the help of technology, the author can get a lot of inspiration in pouring ideas and imagination when writing. Based on the research conducted by Mumpuni and Nur Prati in 2018, one method that can be done is to utilize web pages, but in terms of information acquisition and processing of web pages. In general, web pages contain writing, image, sounds, and even videos. The, the easy of access, attractive appearance, and the first content of information make uh, the web suitable for use the process of developing writing skill. And the last one, next, uh, how can the information technology develop uh, creating, creative writing as well? In the realm of education, information on te of technology strategies integrate the students into an educational situation before the learning uh, process by participating in planning educational experiences and designing digital content. In the current era, after COVID-19 pandemic, every side of life is made content, including students who are given the task of creating video content that is relevant to the subject matter. In creation of content, of course, is requires information. So the creation of appropriate content useful in addition to just as entertainment audience that contently, uh, certainly requires high creativity. The content to be created also requires writing that will be used uh, as a reference where the content will be made. In writing video scripts, dialogue that occurs in the content or how the storyline to be written in a course and how the linguistic elements are carried away in certainly requires searches of technological information that are then learned, developed and updated according to author version uh, so as to create creative works. And next, I have conclusion for my presentation today. Creative writing, which is a form of writing with many types of genres that aim to educate and entertain readers so that the diction usage is later, upload the, that writer's imagination and still inform the reader about something. Creative writing needs to continue to be developed by utilizing information technology as a tool to enrich references and expand audiences. One of them uh, is the use of the web. And I have uh, the quote by Sylvia Platt. And by the way, everything in life is writable, but if you have uh, the outgoing guts to do it and the imagination to improve, the worst enemy to creativity is self done. And next, this is my references for my presentation today. Uh, thank you for attention. Uh, I give it back to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ajun. Such a great presentation. All right, everyone, that's the end of the presentation session. Uh, thank you for all presenters. I hope that the materials could be very beneficial for all of us. I mean, all right, uh, all participants, we're going to the next session, which is question and answer session. Uh, seems like, uh, there's already several questions on the chat box and um, we the presenter will uh, answer the questions in this session but if your question is not answered in this session due to the limited time don't worry the presenter will answer it via email all right let's start from the very first question it is uh, the question from Nurjihan Adilah from Bandung Institute of Technology uh, it is the question for Raihani all right um, I'd like to invite Raihani to answer uh, Nurjihan's question all right, Tadila. Yep. 
All right, Raihani, uh, time is yours. All right, uh, thank you for the questions, Nurjihan, and I ask uh, for the moderator to answer the questions from uh, Ningsi and Nurjihan because it is related to each other. Yes, please. All right. Um, uh, for Ningsi, questions first. I think uh, there is uh, no one that is better, or and uh, there is not. It is dependent of on how and what at the moment is used. For example, in the context of young children, it will be better to use a physical word, a physical first card. I mean, why? Because uh, it will be very rare for young children to use digital first card because maybe some of them were educated by parents uh, to reduce or not use gadgets at all because of the eye's health and etc. So it is better to use a physical flashcard except uh, for the certain moments. On the other hand, uh, maybe the digital, the digital flashcards are better for learners who are old enough and have a habit where they often uh, use gadgets. It is related to the Nurjihan's question. Yes, it could because as I mentioned before, it is effective for any level. So uh, I have a recommendation. There are several game-based uh, websites that you can uh, access in, the, in your gadgets that uh, contain flashcards. First, word wall. The name of the game is Find the Match. It's almost the same as a flashcard. In addition, uh, there is Quizlet. In Quizlet, you can search flashcard English. Then you will find the English flashcards uh, games. However, on both websites, you can also make your own games about flashcards with your topic uh, that you want. Maybe that's all from me. Thank you. All right, Raihani, thank you for your answer. And uh, hopefully it can help um, uh, Nurjihan and Ningsi. And um, because we have uh, several questions, several unanswered questions, uh, we will move to the next question. Uh, it, is, uh, uh, it comes from Miss Meli Sasri. It is uh, the question for Dini. I'd like to invite Dini to answer her question. Dini, please. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you for Miss Melissa for uh, asking this question. Well, I admit that most of English TV series contains inappropriate elements such as uh, violence, cruel language, or adult contents, which represent culture of America, for example. That's why uh, I do not recommend children to watch it, absolutely. And related to moral value, when you want to watch TV series in a streaming platform, there must be a sort of information that you can read before you watch it or if it isn't enough, you can easily search on Google. But for me, you won't really feel and understand the moral value until you watch it. I mentioned earlier, right, on the examples, uh, one of TV series that I really love, The Vampire Diaries. You might think it will tell us about vampire stories uh, with bloody, scary scenes, but it's not. Uh, Vampire Diaries contains important moral values such as the importance of family, taking care of each other between friends and also the main characters, namely Damon, teach us that bad people could change to be good one when they find perfect reason, like love. That's all uh, my answer. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Dini. Uh, uh, all right, let's move to the next question. It is uh, from Linda Alia Zahra. The question is for Salsa. All right, Salsa, uh, please. All right, uh, first of all, I would like to thank Linda for asking me. And yeah, I would like to answer this question. 
So actually the process of guessing the meaning of the word is the process that will that will help us to make the quality of meeting the word better because we process uh, we process the word in our brain deeply and thoughtfully we guess its meaning from its context, which means that we also uh, learn the values in the context. It is different when we just immediately uh, look up the meaning from the dictionary. The process is very, uh, what is it, superficial. So Polynesian said that we have to try uh, to guess its meaning from the context first, rather than immediately look up the dictionary because it is not good. It is not better when you try to guess its meaning from its context first. For example, that is a sentence like, uh, she eats meatball in the dining table. And from that sentence, you just unknow the meaning of it. So the first thing that you have to do is guess the meaning of it from its context. You will start to think about what she is likely to do with the meatballs at the dining table. You will start thinking about some possibilities with uh, the context and you have to choose the possibilities that best fit the context. And if you uh, still cannot guess its meaning, you can open the dictionary and to make it uh, to make it better, you can make a small uh, dictionary that contains the new vocabulary that you find in your short stories. But uh, the point here, uh, when you go back and read again your short stories, you cannot immediately look up your small dictionary because it is uh, it will be superficial like before. So you have to try uh, to remember first, and then you can uh, open the dictionary if you cannot guess it again. It is called the process of uh, testing yourself. Like, are you a member about the meaning of that word or not? Something like that. And it will help you to make uh, the word stick in your memory uh, uh, better than before. And maybe that's my answer. Hopefully you can get the point. Thank you. All right, Salsa, hopefully it can answer uh, Linda's question. And uh, let's move to the next question. Again, it is uh, for Salsa. The question comes from Alisa Amelia. Salsa, please. All right, uh, and maybe this question is related to uh, the question from uh, Anissa. Uh, so I would like to answer uh, this question. Uh, actually, my topic is about learning vocabulary through short stories only, yeah, but uh, I will try to uh, answer this question. Uh, and uh, related to this question, related to Anissa, uh, I mean, <laughs> Alisa Amelia's question, actually, finding the right book or sources for uh, learning vocabulary is the first step that we have to do. Because here we talk about extensive reading sources in learning vocabulary, of course, that we have to, uh, to find the enjoyable book and make sure that the book is interesting to you so you can enjoy uh, the vocabulary learning process. And then I also uh, use the recommendation from Fintime again. Sam asked my presentation before. So Fintime recommended you that uh, uh, we also have to find books that uh, allow us to use this comprehensible input, which means we should be able to understand about 75% until 80% of what you are reading, but not everything. And I think uh, if you are low or medium proficient learners, I think you can use children's book because it contains basic vocabulary or you can use uh, short comic or graphic novels, which contains, um, which contains some pictures that will help you to understand the plot and learning vocabulary. And for uh, the patient, from Anissa, I think I will recommend uh, the Cinderella story for short stories. Because this story, when I was in the IELT class with my group, and it turns out that uh, this story uh, is suitable for learning vocabulary because this story is uh, familiar with many people, and it can lead you to uh, it can lead you to know uh, the use of English vocabulary and imaginative context, and also. There are some vocabulary sets that can be learned, such as uh, sleepers, flick, struck, and rust. 
And also, uh, Cinderella is a simple, fun, and interesting story. So it's kind of good uh, reading comprehension text. And then they are rich in terms of vocabulary, but structurally simple and easy to follow. Uh, yeah, maybe that's my answer. Thank you. Right, thank you, Salsa. Salsa um, actually already answered uh, Alisa's and Anissa's question, right? And then uh, let's move to the next uh, question. It is from Kantia. Uh, and the question is for Salsa. Salsa, please. All right, uh, thanks, Santia, for giving me a question. Uh, actually, the process is the same, yeah? whether it is for context outside the classroom or not, and whether you are students of any level, whether elementary, intermediate, or advanced level. The only difference thing is how you develop the process. In the process that I mentioned before, that is a process that can be applied, that can be done, that can be uh, developed uh, differently depending on the context and uh, your level, which is elaboration. And although from some of the studies uh, I have read about uh, vocabulary learning through short stories, mostly they are applied in elementary or middle school, but not in high school or college. But uh, maybe when it comes to uh, the classroom, the process of repetition will be uh, restricted by the teacher. For example, it can be to uh, reading processes and the words that students found in reading process are immediately uh, written in their book or in their paper so that the word can be elaborated in the, in the elaboration learning process. For elementary and uh, intermediate levels, elaboration uh, maybe can be done with uh, prefixes and suffixes. The teachers uh, can write uh, a prefix or suffix and ask the student to say the words that and in that uh, prefix and or, or suffixes and then uh, different meanings and uses should be explained and after that uh, the, uh, the teacher uh, the teacher explain about uh, the word uh, for example there is a word gardener in their short story so the teacher asked the student to uh, explain about uh, the word garden and then after that explained about the word gardener. It is to help the student that this uh, prefixes and then also suffixes do change in uh, the meaning of the word. When the meaning is changed, uh, the use of the word will change too. And then uh, for synonyms and antonym, also the strategies that will help learners expand their vocabulary or you can use uh, something like uh, family words like creator, creator, creativity, something like that. For example, here the process will be like that. Uh, the teachers will write uh, create, create uh, in the whiteboard or in blackboard and ask the student about its meaning and uh, its parts of speech. When the when the teacher uh, the teachers uh, write that write uh, that word, the student try to uh, to to answer about meaning for that word. When they give the correct meaning, they should use uh, the word and sentence. And then uh, after uh, the teachers could, uh, ex uh, could explain again about the families of words, something like uh, creator, creative, or re recreate, created, creating, creation, and then also a uh, creator. Uh, it will help students to know that there is a form with a one word. And maybe when it comes to advanced students or uh, college students, development of uh, elaboration process can be done with uh, collocation, idioms, or slang that will help them to know uh, the broader use of language. Thank you. All right, Salsa, thank you very much for the answers. Hopefully it can help uh, uh, Kantias to understand more about uh, the topic. Thank you very much. And let's move to the next question. It is from Muhammad Iqbal Naufal Ramdani. The question is for um, Raihani. All right, Raihani, please. All right, thank you. Thank you, Iqbal, for the end for the question. Uh, the answer is yes. That's 
through. Now many authors release many ebooks that can be accessed easily by download it in gadgets, whether it is free or not. It has uh, disadvantages uh, such as the radiation that can affect uh, the health of children's eyes and etc. And the one solution is by the help. Uh, by the help of the guidance of the teachers and parents so they can help children to manage uh, their time to use the ebooks or they can help them to read the story on the ebooks and ask them to listen or etc to relate with my topic that is about flashcard media in learning vocabulary for young children maybe with the ebooks and the guidance of teachers and parents they can help learners to learn uh, vocabulary also using ebooks Maybe that's all from me. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Raihani. Hopefully, it it uh, can uh, add another insight about her topic. Let's move to the next question. Uh, it is uh, a question from Hannah Lydia, uh, and the question is for Osi. All right, Osi, please. Uh, all right, uh, thanks, Hannah, for your question. Uh, is learning English through English film is effective? Uh, yes, of course, uh, because the activities are so fun. And if you use uh, English subtitle and indeed uh, the intention to watch uh, for learning English, uh, for me personally, watching English movie using English subtitle trains my hearing and pronunciation. And I sometimes watch uh, it twice, one with Indonesian subtitle, one with English subtitle. And the most uh, effective way to add vocabulary at the same time. Uh, when there is a word for you don't understand, you can open a dictionary and write down in the meaning, then repeat it after that. OK, thank you. All right, thank you very much, Osi. Uh, hopefully it can help uh, Hannah to understand more about uh, Osi's topic. And uh, let's move to the next question. The question is uh, from Fauzan Ramadan Pratama. Uh, uh, it is the question for uh, Dini and Osi, right? Seems like uh, the same topic. All right, uh, maybe Dini, you can answer the question first, please. Okay, thank you, Fauzan, for asking the question. Uh, as I mentioned before, you might want to know about that TV series or movie first before watching it. If the informations on the internet are not enough, Another alternative is by asking to someone who is experienced and trusted enough for uh, asking recommendation whether this TV series or movie is appropriate enough to watch or not. Also, uh, as a note, you are the audience, you need to be wise. Foreign cultures are different with ours. Uh, there's nothing we can do about it, okay? So know which one you can follow and not. And once more, I do not recommend children or those who are below 17 years old to watch English TV series, at least for most of them. Thank you. Maybe Osi can answer. All right, uh, thanks, Dini. And uh, all right, Fajan, thanks for your question. Uh, the solution to overcome, we have to uh, should select a good educational English movie. In addition to uh, selecting short English movie, uh, we have also need to consider the value of the movie. Uh, since a good movie is a movie that contains a good moral value, uh, we have to need to review the movie first before playing the movie. And we have to need to see rating of the movie first. It's for adults or it is appropriate for a young audience. Uh, in my opinion, you have to be smart in choosing movie, uh, especially the context uh, for study. Uh, there are many choices of uh, film, and it's so we have to uh, we have to uh, select a good educational English movie. Okay, thank you. 
All right. Thank you very much, Dini and OC, for the answer. Hopefully, it can um, give uh, a new insight about uh, their topic. And then uh, let's move to the next question. We still have uh, two questions more. Uh, the question from Novi Febrianti. It is uh, for uh, Fauzia. All right, Fauzia, please. All right. I do, I would like to thank to uh, Novi uh, to ask me a question. Uh, yes, extensive reading cannot only be done be done in the classroom, but yes, of course, extensive reading activities can be done outside the classroom. For example, as I do too, <laughs> I read books that I like and interest. I read novels with design brand that I like. Recently is historical fiction. The most I like is the C speaks his name. Uh, translate novel from Laut Bercerita, which tells the history of Indonesia during the era of Orde Baru. And then to report what I read, I always make a review and post it on social media, my blog, and Goodreads. Thank you. All right, thank you, Fauzia, uh, for the answer. Um, hopefully, it can help uh, us to understand more about your topic. And yeah, let's move to the next question. It is the question from Edward Situmora. And it seems uh, like uh, the question for Ajeng. Uh, it is related to Ajeng's topic. All right, Ajeng, please. All right, thank you. And thank you to <coughs> Edward for nice question. Uh, I have to uh, answer your question. Electronic literature is something that is created digitally and it's meant to be it's meant to be viewed digitally as explained by Catherine Harless. Electronic literature is generally uh, considered to exclude print literature that has been digitalized. And uh, the genres of lit electronic literature is uh, hypertext fiction, code work, flash poetry, generative poetry, interactive fiction, locative narrative, and block fiction. And I have some example uh, for electronic literature is Flash Putri entitled Fight by Robert Kendall, Hypertext Fiction entitled Body by Sally Jackson, and Code Work uh, entitled Waiting by Damon Harmon. And the benefit of electronic uh, literature for educational today, having students see the con connective be between analyzing uh, traditional print-based works and multimedia works allow to the lesson of critical thinking and analysis to extend from the classroom uh, to their daily lives. Understanding that the same tools and strategies for understanding and the, the separating literature can be used to understand and uh, disappear, disappear electronic literature and must uh, media offers the students an opportunity to practice on an everyday basis what we have taught them about analysis and critical thinking as it uh, pertains to literary work. Liter literary works. Uh, this is a win for us. Uh, we show them the connective between their current form of entertainment and others and more traditional print based from by doing so uh, we have equipped them for more uh, insightful interaction with the myriad for forms of multimedia they see around the every day thank you all right thank you very much Ajeng. uh hopefully it can uh helpful for all of us and yeah, Alhamdulillah, all questions that uh, came uh, in via the chat box have been answered. Um, but maybe there are other presenters who want to add uh, the answer is please. May I? All right, Dini, please. Uh, I'd like to give an additional for the question of from Hannah Lydia uh, related to is it effective uh, in learning learning English through movies? 
uh, the answer is yes, I think. It is super effective, especially for those who really love to watch movie like me. Uh, besides, you can get entertained. You will uh, be learning at the same time. And it is the way much better to learn English from natives like the actors in the movies, right? Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dini. And um, everyone, because uh, the time is limited, um, we let um, if you have if you still have any questions related to the part uh, the presenter's presentation, you may chat our contact person from EDSA's webinar on academic presentation 2022 organizer. And we will uh, answer it via email, as I mentioned before. And yeah, Alhamdulillah, all the questions um, have been answered. And now let's uh, conclude all the material that has been presented in this session. Uh, it can be concluded that uh, there are many ways to be a tremendous learner. One of them is mastering English skills and the simple step to achieve it is practice because practice makes practice and practice makes perfect. Finally, we come to the last session of this AdSAS webinar on academic presentation 2022. Thank you to the presenters who are delivering your presentation and also thank you very much to all audiences for your participation. Thank you very much for your enthusiasm to join this webinar. We hope uh, you all are always healthy and happy and also hopefully this webinar that we have done today will be very useful for all of us. Thank you for your attention. I apologize for any mistakes. Amdila Pilajayuna. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, everyone. And a friendly reminder after this session, it will be uh, the next uh, session. You can stay in this uh, breakout room or you can uh, choose another breakout room. All right. Thank you very much, everyone.